one of the very, very important things coming out of, of, of everything we're saying, there are some basic constituents that make great crime drama, and obviously characterization, fantastic plots, um, research, which doesn't just give you the facts, but gives you the inspiration to create really unusual and challenging characters. Um, can I just quickly ask you one thing before we move on to Daniel? Um, in terms of characterization, you worked on a long-running show. It was all created and you joined it as a member of the army that drove that show. Um, how did you keep your characters fresh but keep them the same? Because ultimately, I mean, I, I think this is a major preoccupation. If you're making a long-running series, uh, you want your fantastic central characters that actually the viewers turn on for every week. You want them to be iconic, unpredictable, interesting, but you do need them to, st when I say stay the same, I don't literally mean that. You want them to go on a journey, but ultimately, it is very easy. I mean, I've looked over a hundred year, a hundred hours of uh, Freud and Slip, a <laughs> hundred hours of, of Waking the Dead, and actually, you know, Peter Boyd without the anger just isn't going to be Peter Boyd, but why is he angry, and, and how does that work, and is he too angry? These are debates that are held every series. You are also constructing um, a, a group of characters who all relate to each other and have a dynamic with each other. You want to keep that fresh, and yet you don't want them to all get too close together. It is a real art to keep the characters of a long-running show fresh, refreshed, and, uh, and still captivating for the audience. So did you feel that pressure upon you within a show like The Bill? Um, I didn't feel it on me personally because there, there is such a big team, so it wasn't down to individual people. But I think one, one of the... As, as a team, definitely has felt we used to have a lot of story conferences to decide, you know, to do, say exactly that, what can we do new with Tony or what can we do new with Adam? And I think... And this kind of applied to EastEnders as well. I, I think one of the things that works really, really well is to dig a little bit deeper under the skin, sort of peeling the layers of the onion and, and just going deeper and deeper. And you've got, when you've got a, a character that you need to keep fresh, that they've often been in there for a long time, so you can revisit their history and it'll just be the smallest, smallest thing that will set off a whole, that'll show you a whole new side of the character and the, one of the things that I think is a good example of it is um, in the bill June Ackland there was a whole episode where her lost son the guy who used to be Mark Fowler in EastEnders turned up and that came about because at one point there was it was only really a reference in a pre I think it was some kind I think it was a kind of hostage situation where June was trying to was talking to a woman who'd, who'd lost a child and she happened to mention June said well I've lost a child as well and you didn't and then I think it was probably a couple of years later somebody pointed out that this this was really interesting and had June actually lost a child had she given it up or had she just say said it to pacify this person who was, who was threatening to do her harm. And it just came from that. And I just think the most innocent little thing in the past, when you start to look at it and apply the sort of whys, whens, how, why, ifs to them, that is the key, uh, that is the key to keeping a character. I think what absolutely isn't the key, which they did in, in, in EastEnders a lot more than the bill, they would introduce things that were completely incongruous with the character and the audience are so quick to spot that. 